I'm gonna give you 10 reasons why you want to avoid moving to South Carolina. Now, I was born in South Carolina in the tiny town of Denmark in the Midlands of the state, and now I live in Greenville in the upstate. I can tell you I've made plenty of videos about the great aspects of South Carolina, and this one may stir this pot a little, have some negative comments, but let's get into it anyway. Now, in case you're watching for the first time, I'm David Crum, and if you want to know everything there is about living in South Carolina, make sure you subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the current market here. And by the way, if you want one of our free guides, then just check the description below. That's where all our contact information is. If this video doesn't convince you not to move to South Carolina, then whether you're moving in nine or 90 days, feel free to give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or schedule a Zoom call. If you wanna to talk to me personally, I would be happy to help you make a smooth move. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty. South Carolina is smack in the middle of the South. If you've never been here, you're probably picturing the beach, maybe some barbecue. Myrtle Beach has more golf courses than sand dollars and is a huge tourist destination for golfers and beachgoers alike. Now, whether you're coming to South Carolina to enjoy some barbecue or the beach and some golf, the weather for the beach and the golf is actually the number 10 reason to avoid South Carolina. We have a subtropical climate and hot summers. If you're on the beach or in the foothills of the upstate, then you may have a nice breeze to go along with it but otherwise between the heat and the humidity you can expect to be hot if you're outside from June to September. It will cool off and be nice in the winter, but don't expect to see much snow. If you're like my friend Tony and like to ice fish, this isn't the place for you. We average three to five inches of snow in the upstate, much less in the lowlands, near none. And last year, we didn't even have any snow in the upstate at all. The weather can bring hurricanes near the coast and cause flooding throughout the state. There isn't much you can do if you're on the coast for a hurricane, but be prepared and insured and know it's a possibility. Now, if you're looking in the Midlands or the upstate, it'll be like the rest of the nation. There are areas that are prone to flood, and that's why we make sure to research flood zones for each property before considering them. South Carolina gets a lot of even rain, so normal amounts aren't going to be an issue most likely like they can be in the dry southwest, for example. Flash flooding will occur here when we're getting exorbitant amounts of rainfall very quick. Water will, of course, flow downhill, so the problem areas are going to be low spots that follow the normal paths of water, such as streams and rivers. South Carolina has been growing for years, led by the beaches and the upstate. The economy is booming and has been for a decade or at least two in Greenville. This looks like it will keep roaring into the future and that leads me to number nine economic growth and corresponding population growth is swelling the size of cities and towns in South Carolina and the infrastructure is having trouble keeping up. Our roads here need attention because of all the extra wear and tear and many could stand to be expanded to handle larger traffic volumes. Now, you won't see crazy long commutes like you might in the Northeast or Southern California, thank goodness. Average resident here lives less than 30 minutes from work. My number eight reason is one that really troubles me. Being in the deep South, Southern cooking has a long tradition in South Carolina. I love a good barbecue and frequent Henry's Smokehouse near my home, but there is nothing there that qualifies as a healthy diet. From sweet potato casserole to mac and cheese, banana pudding, pecan pie, I love it all, but that isn't what your doctor's gonna recommend. Southern tradition Dishes like shrimp and grits, chicken bog, crispy fried chicken, and buttermilk biscuits are all high on ingredients that taste great. But if you're looking for a health conscious place to live, you'll need to be very picky on your eating out in South Carolina. Reason not to move to South Carolina is the pay here. South Carolina has a booming economy and a great cost of living, but that low cost of living can translate into lower paying jobs as well. If you're moving here and looking for part-time work, it could pay significantly less than where you're leaving. I think that full-time jobs are probably going to compete better, but you're still going to receive less compensation to live in a lower cost place like South Carolina. Now, my number six is tourism. Millions of people from around the nation and even the world visit South Carolina each year, and this is the state's biggest industry. Tourists flock to Charleston and its wonderful cultural and history. They come in droves to family-friendly golf haven and adventure destination Myrtle Beach. Both are top 10 coastal destinations, with Myrtle Beach getting more than 17 million visitors each year. This is great for local economies, but can be a curse as well. The money visitors spend help with local infrastructure, but if you live near one of these areas, then you're going to have to deal with the traffic, long lines in restaurants, very busy attractions that you may wish to enjoy or just 
deal with the eyesore of all those tourists. Either way, if you're considering the coast, be prepared for a drastic influx of people during the warm months. Before I get to number five, if you're enjoying the video, how about a thumbs up? Now, my number five reason that you may want to look elsewhere is that we are a small state. While Charleston, Columbia, Greenville are solid mid-sized cities, and Rock Hill is almost a commuter city for Charlotte, we just don't have any big city life available here. Now, if you want a dense metro area that's open 24 hours a day, always has something to do, you're going to be disappointed in South Carolina. If you're wanting that Miami vibe, the feel in New York or LA, then you're better off avoiding South Carolina as we just won't have the excitement of the neon big city. While we do claim some college football teams with South Carolina and Clemson, amongst others, and some minor league sports teams, we do not have a professional team from any of the big four leagues. The Carolina Panthers and Carolina Hurricanes claim both states, but both of them are physically in North Carolina. So if you're looking for that big atmosphere, it's not here. My fourth reason to avoid my home state will be familiar to anyone living further south than South Carolina, and that is the wildlife. Now, we're not Australia where everything is out to get you, but we have some critters to watch out for when you're in nature or just on your back porch. If you're near the coast, there are alligators to be aware of when you're near the water. The Department of Natural Resources estimates 100,000 alligators inhabit South Carolina, and they love it here. They don't really come to the upstate because of cooler temps, and you can find maps online like this one showing a no gator line just above Columbia. But if you promise not to tell anyone, I'll let you know that Critter Control, a company that removes animals gone wrong in the upstate, told me that they had to call someone to rehome a gator from a pond in Spartanburg. The local folks aren't licensed since they don't normally see gators in our area. The only other large predators in South Carolina are in the foothills of the Blue Ridge at the top of the state. Mountain lions and black bears can be seen in the woods, but rarely bother people. I do have a friend who saw a black bear in his backyard in Taylor's, but those sightings are really rare. They can go as far as Simpsonville, but that is very rare. Snakes are your medium-sized worry here, and the most common danger noodles are rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, coral snakes, and copperheads. I don't personally see a lot of these venomous snakes, but I do come across black rat snakes with some regularity. Probably more than others do since I have chickens. The snakes love to eat the eggs, but we just rehome them to the nearest woods and keep going. If you see a black king snake, try and keep those around. They're immune to the venom of the rattlers, cottonmouths, and copperheads, and they will eat them. The other wildlife to be aware of in South Carolina are the small pests. They're getting their own ranking at reason number three. Our warm weather and consistent rain here are perfect for little bugs. The whole state has mosquitoes, and they are worse where there is still water for them to breed. These and the flies are compounded in the low country by gnats and horse flies. Once I was used to the gnats, but now they drive me crazy when I'm around them at the beach. The famous palmetto bug is just another name for an American cockroach. But everyone I know will swear that we grow them extra big here. They like to live outside, but they love to visit your home. And if you're here even a little while, I'm sure you're going to get a visitor or two. If you're considering a move to South Carolina, then termites are a little pest that you really need to watch out for. I recommend a CL100, colloquially known as a termite inspection around here. If you're scared of bugs and you never want to see them, South Carolina could be bad choice. My number two is allergies. And if this list was for me personally, I think that this would be number one. South Carolina has a strong allergy season. When pollen begins to get heavy will depend on where you are in the state. It'll hit first in the lowlands and move upwards with the warming of the seasons. Spring allergies are the strongest and can begin in March and go until June. Personally, I start taking a daily antihistamine at the first sign and usually go till around June 1st. There are also fall allergies which can peak in November but don't seem to affect as many as spring and aren't as harsh. Allergies are definitely a reason to consider living somewhere besides South Carolina. Now, my number one reason is culture. If you like people to mind their business and leave you alone, South Carolina is not the place to move. Long-time residents and some new arrivals, I'm sure, practice Southern hospitality. 
isn't just something you see reserved for TV and movies. People wave at each other when they're driving in their own neighborhoods or speak to strangers at the grocery store. Someone is probably going to offer to help you if you look perplexed trying to pick out a great watermelon. Now, South Carolina's tourist motto, smiling faces, beautiful places, isn't just a saying. You're going to see people smiling at you even when you don't know them. Just smile and wave back. Then, if you want to know more about South Carolina, just go up and ask. Now, this is wrapping up my top 10 reasons to move to South Carolina. If you're from South Carolina or you're living here now, please leave us a comment and let people know what you love or hate about South Carolina. That'll help anyone else who's considering the state as their future home. If you're considering buying and have some questions, just reach out. You can call, shoot a text, send an email. All our information is in the description below. And if you want a free guide on selling your home for top dollar, then you can get that there as well. Remember, whether you're moving in nine or 90 days, I'd love to hear from you and see how we can make your move to the Palmetto State a smooth one. Until then, I'm David Crum, and I look forward to showing you all around South Carolina.